Okay, on this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to do a couple different things. I'm going to be showing how to do um, compositing and show you what the definition of compositing is. And then I'm going to be showing how to do animation as well. And I'm showing these two together uh, because those two kind of go hand in hand quite well. So um, here we go. And this is going to be a little bit of a longer tutorial, but sit back and uh, get some popcorn because it's very entertaining. Um, education's always entertaining. Just kidding. Um, very dry. Here we go. We've got uh, two different shots here. I'm just going to show a basic, very, very basic compositing. Um, here we've got um, two different shots. We've got um, this shot where we have this girl sitting down over in the chair here. And then we have, uh, then she's going to enter it over into the scene here on a different shot. So we're going to do basically a split screen that shows her entering from the other, other side. I mean, if you want to do more um, um, complex compositing, I mean, it's going to take things like motion control devices and things like that. Um, but this is a very basic composite. And actually, you can kind of get away with some kind of decent effects uh, with some basic composites like this. A uh, definition of composite is combining two images on the screen at the same time from two different uh, video sources. Uh, so in this example here, and actually the most basic e expression of a composite is something like this. Let me show you. Uh, I'm going to drag a video clip down here inside the timeline. And then drag another video clip in here. Drag it down inside. So we basically have these two video clips in it. Uh, in our side of our timeline as we play through, it does the edit and it cuts to the other clip. But I'm going to uh, add a dissolve here. So it does this, and by the way, the shortcut for that is Control D or Apple D or Command D on a Mac. And it adds that dissolve there. I'm going to hit Shift Plus to kind of increase the track height there. As we play through this, it'll hit this cross dissolve and it will dissolve from one clip to the next. This here is one of the most basic forms of compositing because we've got two different images on the screen at the same time going to delete that and uh, we're going to just do a basic split screen here. So I've got this shot here. We've timed this out where uh, another person walks in and stands in for her and uh, she looks up and sees herself and she's kind of shocked. Very amazing video here. Very great directing. So I'm going to um, put an endpoint, play through this to the point where she's supposed to walk into the screen and she looks up and notices herself and does a double take. Out point and I'm going to drop that into the timeline. Okay. Uh, by the way, if I just want to drop video into the timeline, you can, uh, that brought video and audio, the hitting the period did, so I'm just going to grab, you have these two little icons over here. You have the drag video only and the drag audio only. I'm going to grab my video and just drag it down inside, so we just bring the video down inside. All right, I'm going to go to the end of the timeline. Uh, I actually, I'm going to go grab the other shot. Now we've got this where he stands in for her over here, and she walks up and sees herself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of time this to where she suddenly looks up. Uh, right here where she puts her elbow down on the screen, I want that's where, right where I want her to notice herself. So I'm going to put an end point right there. I'm going to go down here and look at where right when she looks up and does a double take right there. So that's where I want the end point uh, of this clip to be right there. So I'm going to clear this video line and this video line here. Make sure we're going to grab this and drag that down in. I'm going to get to the end of this video line here and I'm going to hit Apple K, Control K and cut that and delete it. Now I'm just going to grab this and back time it. Now when she walks in she will notice herself right at the right time. Um, if I turn down the opacity of this top clip here, if you can't see the opacity all you have to do is hit this little wrench here. Uh, this opacity line, first of all you have to have tall tracks. So if you're at small tracks, you hit Shift Plus to increase your track height, and it will increase your tra all the track height uh, there. Now if we hit this wrench, and uh, you hit Show Video Keyframes. Right now mine's already checkmarked. If yours is not, checkmark this. And notice, notice right there, they're gone. So I hit this wrench, checkmark Show Video Keyframes. There we go. I'm going to grab this opacity and turn it down so it's uh, becoming more and more transparent, about 50% transparent. Now I can see through this video on top to the video beneath. So this video is what I, I'm seeing on top, and then the other video beneath. Uh, let me delete this. You'll see the video that you see beneath. I'm going to undo, and it puts that half dissolved video on top. So you can see what we're looking at here. Uh, but now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this video track on top, and I'm going to go to the effects, and I'm going to add a crop. I'm going to type in crop. I'm going to grab this crop, 
drag and drop it onto this video clip and I'm going to go into the effects controls and I've got that crop added to this top video clip here. Now uh, I'm going to turn this bottom one off so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm going to turn that one off. I'm going to go up here uh, to my crop and I'm going to uh, grab the right side and you notice what this does is it crops the video. As you drag that left and right you'll see this or the the left side or the top side you'll see it cropping wherever you do uh, the bottom top right left whatever you do I'm gonna do the right hand side I'm gonna move it past that point where we see her over here and now I'm gonna turn on this video below it and boom pretty simple we see that composite of her stand, sitting there looking at herself so let's play through this now she walks in and then all of a sudden she looks up and notices herself isn't that an amazing, amazing, amazing trick? Isn't that so beautiful? But this is the basics of compositing here. And actually, uh, if you want to, just so that you can hide the edge a little bit, if the lighting changes a little bit, you can just grab this edge feather and just feather that, and you'll notice it softens the edge and blends that in a little bit better. Now, if we turn that off, it's going to have a nice soft edge here that uh, you're not seeing. So. so there we go. And that is a basic composite right there, but I want to get into keyframing and animation here now that you kind of understand the definition of compositing. So we did a little trick shot where she sees herself. Uh, I'm going to go and create a new timeline here. I'm going to keep this one here. I'm going to call this uh, Girl Who Sees Herself. Got to spell that right. There you go. So I'm going to create a new timeline here. I'm going to go over to my uh, footage here. And we're going to create a little montage here. Uh, we're going to create this kind of cool little montage. It's going to be kind of, uh, um, and we're going to do some animation with it. We're going to do some cropping and some animation that's going to look, we're going to do a little intro, uh, a little montage intro that's going to kind of look like, uh, if you've ever seen 24, some of the split screen effects that they do on there. And that's going to require a little bit of animation. So I'm going to grab one of my clips here. I'm going to drag and drop it to the new item icon and create a new timeline. This might do timeline, but I want to get that out of my, uh, bin there, so I'm going to grab that and drag it to the left, drop it out. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly edit a little montage with kind of the timing here um, out of these clips that we've got here. I've got some clips of typing on keyboards and some people looking at each other. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to edit this little keyboard montage, then I'm going to come back and show you what we've got. So just some basic editing here. Okay, so I've got a basic uh, edit here, the keyboards typing and that one typing there, just some basic editing. So we're going to have these two keyboards typing and then it's going to cut to these kind of close-up looks of these people eyeing each other here. So I'm going to grab some quick shots here. I'm going to grab a shot where he kind of squints. You can see there's kind of this little hacking competition or something going on here. No, nothing too amazing here, but uh, so I've got that little shot there. So it goes keyboard, keyboard, then squints. And I'm going to grab this one here. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is this one here is going to suddenly crop and move up to the top and then we'll have his uh, reveal at the bottom and then crop as well to reveal the third person. So we've got a little split screen going on here. So I'm going to get him right where he raises his eyebrow there. In point, out point, grab that, drag it down in. And I want it to come in so he's going to be looking and then I'll squint. And right about there, right when he squints, is when I want this other shot to come in. So he squints. And right now I'm just going to put this on top. It'll automatically edit to the shot that's on top. So watch this cuts to that one and he does his little eyebrow lift but uh, I'm going to hit Y which is my um, that's my slip edit I'm going to grab my Y hit Y and slip this I'm going to slip it over to the left a little bit right before he starts doing that notice on the left frame there I'm going to get it right before his eyebrow lifts so my timing's right there we go the timing's right on that and then I'm going to grab this third one which is kind of I guess the moderator or mediator I don't know uh, but right when he does his little eyebrow lift there I'm going to do in point out point and I'm going to grab that and I want that to come in just a little bit later. So it's going to go from this guy, he'll move out of the way, this guy and this guy. It'll reveal all three of them. Um, and then we're going to do a little split screen with the uh, keyboard. So now I've got these compiled on top of each other here. We've got And notice, like I said, it cuts to whoever is on top. But actually, let's see, I want this guy to be on top because uh, he's going to reveal the guy below him. So what I did there is I grabbed that, moved that up. Uh, let me show you that again. I'm just going to grab this clip, arrow up until it's above everything else. I'm going to grab everything and option and arrow down. It'll move it down the timeline uh, for me. There we go. So 
it's going to reveal to this guy and actually I want to trade these ones around as well I'm actually going to swap this guy as well so I'm going to grab this one move it up there grab all three option arrow down so I was going to cut from this guy down to this guy down to this guy here but now you can't see them because he is on top the entire time except for right here you'll notice it'll cut down to there and there okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit shift plus I'm going to kind of make this track a little bit higher so I can kind of see what I'm doing here and start messing with these so I can see who's who all right uh, so let's introduce you to animation for the split screen part so I'm going to highlight this first clip here I'm going to turn off the bottom two clips and I'm going to be looking at just this one if you select a clip and you go up to effects controls uh, you're going to notice this area. I'm going to make this a little bit larger right here. This area right here is your animation area. This animates any attributes, pretty much any attributes that you see over in this region here. Uh, right now I don't have any filters added, but this will animate uh, your motion. And you'll notice if I grab my position, it'll move here, my clip, left or right, or vertically, horizontally or vertically. Uh, on These are all uh, attributes native to each individual clip here. The scale, if you want to zoom up, if you want to reframe the eyes, you can. you got to be careful zooming up because you'll lose resolution. So I'm not going to be zooming up on this, but I just want to show you how you can change things like rotation um, and change your, your uniform scale so you can change the, the aspect ratio. Uh, opacity you can change in here as well. Um, if you turn off your keyframing and change the opacity of the entire clip, uh, that's your little keyframing right there. This is naturally turned on when you come in here. I'm not sure why, but it's always clicked and turned on, and it's going to be adding a keyframe if you start animating it, unless you turn off the opacity keyframing right there, which we're going to be talking about. This little watch right here is your keyframe turner on or uh, this turns on keyframing, and it will add your first keyframe for you on the timeline. What keyframes are, basically, uh, they're defining points on the on a frame telling it where the frame what what the definition of the frame is at that point uh, whether it's a certain position whether it's scale whether it's attributes on a on an effect clip so watch this I'm gonna go over here to position I'm going to click toggle animation and it's turned on the animation you'll notice that's depressed now and you'll notice it's added my first keyframe what it's saying is at this point in time right there on that frame uh, this the position of this video is at these attributes right here or if we do, let's do more simply scale. Uh, I'm going to click on that. It's going to delete all my keyframes. If it turns it off, it turn, deletes all the keyframes. But I'm going to click on that point in time. It's at 100% scale, which is neutral, the way the video came in. Now, if I move down the timeline here, and you're going to go right here. Let me show you what these things are. This is an adding keyframe button right there. And these two arrows here will jump to your keyframes. This is a reset switch here. You hit reset. It'll reset uh, parameters for a keyframe. Uh, you click up here, it'll reset everything for a motion right there. Click on that, it's going to reset everything for the keyframe. It added one here because it's resetting attributes for that point, which it really didn't need to do. But if we change this here and zoom up so that's at 182%, you click reset, it resets it back to its original point. So if we, uh, so now I've got two keyframes here. Uh, if you want to add a keyframe or delete a keyframe, you've got to make sure that you land on a keyframe first by using these arrows. To land on a keyframe, if you're not exactly on that frame, it'll add or subtract keyframes unintentionally. So make sure that you land on the keyframe by hitting these arrows. And then you can hit this, we'll delete a keyframe, or undo, you can select that keyframe and delete. Same thing. Um, and to add a keyframe, you just simply click this and it adds a keyframe. Or if the attributes are different from this previous keyframe, if you just start changing attributes, watch this, it will automatically add that keyframe for you. So I'm going to navigate back to this previous keyframe and watch what happens when I press play now. This keyframe is at 100%. This one is at 147. So it's going to animate from this point to this point from 100 to 147. So watch this. As I get to this keyframe and press play, it's going to zoom up. There we go. And that is basic animation right there in Premiere. Um, same as on any of these effects here. If I go to rotation, Add a keyframe. Hopefully you get this at this point. Go further down the line. Add another keyframe right there. Click. Go to the beginning one. And let's have that at zero. We're going to go over here and we're going to rotate this 360 degrees. One full time there. There we go. So now watch what happens. From this point to this point, it's going to scale up from here to here. And from here to here, it's going to rotate 360 degrees. If we get to the beginning, it plays, hits those keyframes, does the animation. There we go. But I'm going to get rid of those keyframes right there. 
I'm going to get rid of these ones because we're not going to need them. That's the basics of adding keyframes. So what we're going to do now is we are going to add keyframes. Let me turn these ones off so I don't affect anything there. We are going to add a, an effect. We're going to add a crop to this. And I'm going to go to the beginning. I'm going to play through this a little bit. And right here, right when it reaches this clip, is where I want this to... Um, let me turn on these video lines. I'm going to get right on that frame here, and that's where I want this to start. You notice that this playhead moves in sync with the playhead down in your timeline. But this, from here to here, just shows the complete duration of your entire edited clip down here. From here is the beginning of the clip. That's the end of the clip. You can zoom here, zoom up to your keyframes, or zoom out by grabbing this little thingy here, this little slider, and moving it back and forth. Okay, so um, let's animate our crop here. I'm going to get it to that point here in the timeline, right there on the second edit. I'm going to add a beginning keyframe on um, top and bottom. I'm going to turn on the keyframes, and it adds a keyframe on top and bottom. So now I'm going to, let's go down uh, five frames. I'm going to hit shift arrow right. It jumps five frames, and I'm going to add two more keyframes. Now I'm going to change my top crop. I'm going to crop down to this portion of his eyes and grab my bottom crop and bring those up so we just have a bar going across his eyes. So now watch this. As it hits this point right here, right here, it's going to do the animation and there you go. I've turned these two tracks off so you're not seeing them below. Watch what happens if I turn that on. You see the track below it. So I'm going to go back uh, I'm going to turn this bottom track off because now what I want this to also do, as it does the crop, I want it to also animate up here. Move. I want this video to move up here to make room for this video down here. So let's go to the beginning keyframe right here. And let's say this happens too fast, uh, first of all. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the second keyframes and I'm going to drag those over a couple of frames. I'm going to just drag those over a little bit. And now that will let's take it way over so you see what happens here. Now as I play from this to this, this is going to make this effect last longer. So it takes a lot longer for it to perform the effect. I'm going to undo that and let's see it. And that looks about right right there. I moved it over a couple frames and that looks about right, the speed. So I like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to land on my beginning keyframe. I'm going to go down under motion. I'm going to turn on my position keyframe. And uh, that's all I'm going to do is animate my position. I'm going to go down here and arrow so I land on the second keyframe of the crop attribute because I want this to end at the same time. Add a keyframe right there. So I've got a keyframe that matches up with these keyframes down here. And on the second position keyframe, the first one is used kind of a pivot point to start the effect, and this one's used to end the effect. I'm going to grab this. Oops, that's left and right. I don't want to do that. I want to move up. So I'm going to move this up to right there. Actually, I'm going to crop that just a little bit more on the bottom just so we have room to shove the other guy's face in here. Right about there. Okay, so now this is the effect that we have so far. And that's a little too cropped, so I'm going to go back, just fix that really quick on the bottom. Right about there. There we go. So we've got his eyes in there. All right, now let's add the second guy. So I'm going to turn him on there, and uh, I'm going to go to the beginning of his clip here, and I'm going to turn the top one off so I can kind of see what I'm doing here. Um, just like that, his clip. I'm going to grab a crop and add it to his effect. But what I want this to do is, when it reveals the one on top, I want him to be down here a little bit. Actually, what I could do is I could just crop the top for the whole clip, and move it right to there. So you can see already we're starting to get that split screen effect. So when this reveals, he's already cropped here. Uh, let me turn off the bottom one. <clears throat> he's already cropped here, so it just reveals to show this clip below it. So now what I'm going to do is do an animation, uh, five frame animation, after this one has appeared right there. I'm going to add a five frame animation on this bottom clip. I'm going to go to um, the bottom Add a crop to the bottom, and why not one to the top just in case. And I'm going to shift five and two more frames, because I had seven frames on the previous one, and I'm going to add new keyframes here. I'm going to crop the bottom, and now we're going to perform the same animation here. Um, we're going to perform the same animation where he moves out of the way. 
So I'm going to jump and land on that keyframe, go to Motion, add a position keyframe, go to the second keyframe down here, and add a second position keyframe, and we're going to move him down. So I can grab my vertical position and move him down out of the way. Right there. Okay, so now we've, so let's look at what we've got here. So now it goes, it reveals one, reveals the other. But I want this one maybe to happen a little bit later here. So we see his face for a little bit longer. So I'm going to grab all the keyframes and shift those down to the right about half a second. Let's see what happens now. Now he's there for a little bit longer. Boom, boom. And maybe even a little bit longer. So let's see that. Reveal and goes down and craps. Okay, so now we're going to reveal this guy down here. When this guy moves down, let's actually have him, uh, we're going to have him fly in from the side. So what I'm going to do is turn off these top here. Uh, I'm going to crop him. And we're going to go top crop down to his eyeballs and uh, bottom crop down to his eyeballs. Let's turn these two on here. And we need to shift him down a little bit. Actually, we could go bottom, reveal him just a little bit more, grab the top, and crop him a little bit more. Okay, so we're going to animate him on. So we're going to, there he is right there, we're going to have him do his eyebrow raise, and as actually, uh, as he's doing his eyebrow raise, we'll, we'll um, have the others move off the screen, and we'll reveal, reveal this guy in the middle here. So let's watch this. Let's go to the beginning of his clip. We're going to go to motion. We're going to add a position keyframe. Shift 5, 6, 7, or sorry, not Shift 5, Shift arrow to the right, does 5 frames. I'm going to add a keyframe, go to the beginning keyframe, line on the beginning keyframe, and I'm going to grab my uh, horizontal position and move him off the screen. Right there, now he's off. Let's reveal him a little bit right there, get him off the screen. There we go. So now he's going to animate from off the screen to on the screen. And there you go. And that's a little too fast, so I'm going to move that over a little bit. And now he reveals onto the screen. So now what we've got so far is... There we go. Okay, I'm going to extend this so that he lasts a little bit longer. But I'm going to move these two off the screen. I'm going to animate these two. Uh, well, I think you get the point by now uh, on this animation part. So I'm going to uh, hurry and do the rest of the animation. I'll come back and uh, show you the steps that I did. Okay, so what I've got here... What I've done here now is, um, so we've used the animation here to create this sort of effect. Watch this as I play through. Does the animation up there, there. This comes in and then he moves off. Um, so we've got that little effect going there where it animates everybody kind of in and out and shows these three different faces with this split screen right there. And there's kind of the 24 style split screens there. Um, if you want to play with that, you can. Anyway, uh, as we come to this keyboard here, I've got two shots of the keyboard. Let me turn this opacity down so you can kind of see the two shots. Just kind of the same two shots as we had at the beginning with one that's um, um, oh, superimposed over the other, and they're both typing at the same time here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm turn the opacity back up. Just so I'm going to do a little uh, diagonal split screen here with a crop. I'm going to go to, and actually what we're going to do is we're going to grab a four-point um, uh, garbage mat. I'm just going to type in garbage to find the four-point garbage mat. Uh, what this does is just creates a drawable, drawable, is that a word? Uh, mask around the around a clip. I'm going to turn off this bottom clip here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to grab, um, I'm going to go over here, and if you click, if you ever see this little symbol right here, what that does is turns on wireframe positions here. If I click that, um, you're going to see these little points over in the corner. It turns on a wireframe on the image. And uh, let me actually show you something really quick. So we move over to these clips here, and we have clips that, have mo that move on and off. Uh, the screen. Um, if you come up here and you want to see wireframe, watch this. I'm going to click on one of these here, uh, which is this clip right here, and I'm going to go up and click on this little wireframe thing for that clip. And you'll notice it creates a wireframe where you're seeing the edge of the frame, and you'll actually see the spline that shows the animation path. You'll be able to see this a little bit more clearly as I do this. I'm going to hit this fit pull down menu. I'm going to say show 25%. What it's going to do is it's going to zoom out 25% of the shot here. And now you can see the wireframe for that entire shot. Watch as I turn these off here. Oops, wrong one. Turn off these shots here. 
and you'll see here, now watch what happens as I grab this and move it around, you can see the wireframe for that shot. And you can see the animation path is creating kind of a weird animation path. I added a keyframe there by creating this weird animation path. Now it animates over and zooms back. Did some weird stuff there. But now you can actually see the image outside the frame. Watch as it disappears. Uh, now we can see the wireframe outside the image there. If I turn this one back on, select it, when it moves out of the screen, watch this, I'm going to click on my little wireframe up here, you can see the image actually leaving the frame, you see the wireframe outside the image now, outside the canvas. This little black square here represents your canvas, and this is kind of outside the canvas, but now you can actually grab this, and you know where it's located, because you can see the wireframe outside, and that's why this little thing is helpful. Let me undo that. Um, but this is called a, a, a spline here. This is uh, basically, it goes from one point to the next. That's the animation spline right there. Um, I'm going to go back and turn this to fit. Actually, let's, let's zoom this down to 50%, right about there. So I'm kind of operate with this garbage mat here. I'm going to select this clip that I have the garbage mat on. I'm going to turn out the bottom layer so I can see clearly. I'm going to click on this right here and create the water wireframe. And what I've got is... Uh, four points that you can create your own mat to crop here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate this so it does so it does a split screen here. Actually, I could create the split screen just have this move on. So let's do this. I'm going to move that a little ways up so I can kind of get this perfectly diagonal split screen here. There we go. So let me click away from that clip, and you can see the split screen that it has created. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just have this animate on. As we showed you before, I'm going to go to Motion, and I'm going to add a position. I'm going to go Shift 5 frames, 6 frames over, 7 frames over. I'm going to add a keyframe. Uh, right here, turn on the keyframing, go to the beginning of the clip, hit Home, go to the beginning of the clip, add another keyframe, and I'm going to animate this off the screen. I'm actually going to use my wireframe. I'm going to grab this and drag it up diagonally there so it goes off the screen barely out of the screen. So now we've got this moving in. So you can see where that comes in help, that little wireframe, so you don't actually have to sit there and change this numerically either. Uh, so I'm going to go to the beginning, and I'm going to do the same thing to this clip. Um, let me go to the second keyframe of that first clip there. Let's go to the second keyframe, land on it. I'm going to go to this clip. I'm going to add that four-point garbage mat to that clip. I'm going to turn it on because I turned it off. There we go. And I'm going to actually hit my motion, and I'm going to just drag this down a little bit right there. And I'm noticing the corner of this here. I'm going to just grow that and scale a little bit. A little bit bigger there. So I don't see the corners of the frame there. I'm going to move that down right about there. Right about there. And now I'm going to um, add my crop here. I'm going to turn off, oh, actually I'm going to leave that on so I can see it, but I'm going to go to my four point garbage mat. I'm going to grab this corner, drag it down like that, and make that little split screen there with the bar in the middle. There we go. There we go. And now um, I'm going to animate that on at the same rate as the other clips. I'm going to go to the first clip. I'm already on the second keyframe of the first clip. So I'm going to go to the second clip and add the keyframe in the exact same point. I turned it on right there. I'm going to go to the beginning, add the beginning keyframe, turn on my wireframe, and drag that off the screen. So now we've got that little animation that finishes, and then the keyboard comes in, and they have a little competition going on um, there on the keyboard. So I'm going to pull this back to fit here. Let's watch what we've got so far. Typing, typing, typing. Oops, I've got my layer, top layer turned off there. So, let's watch what we've got. Typing, typing, typing. Face moves in. There we go. Got a nice little action motif going here. And it's beautiful. There's our split screen. We're ready for broadcast. No, we're not. Uh, a couple more little tips I'm going to show you here. Uh, if you're doing layering like this, one little helpful thing you can do in Premiere is something called nesting. Uh, you can highlight three clips. This is the same as uh, kind of pre-comps in After Effects, if you're familiar with After Effects. If you select three layers, you right-click on it, and you say Nest. What it's going to do, uh, it'll ask you what you want to name it, and I'll call this uh, Eyeball Nest, I guess. 
hit OK, and notice what it did. It took all three of those clips and nested it into one clip. So now this acts like one video clip. Uh, you can shorten this, because at the beginning here, I don't like how long that lasts every four he squints. So now I can actually edit this nested clip and not cha change the timing of the animation. And it's nested this all into one clip. If you need to access the individual layers, again, you can just simply double click on the nest and it opens up in its own timeline. It basically consolidated that into its own timeline. Uh, and now it's looking at it in our timeline over here as one clip, which is pretty cool. So I can actually do the same here. Right click on these two and we'll call this keyboard nest. And if you notice over in your project area, it will show up as a keyboard, I mean as a, uh, as a timeline over here. So I'm going to grab these nests. I'm going to grab them and put them in my own folder here and call this nested sequences. There we go. So I'm going to keep those in there so it doesn't get confused with my original sequences. Um, so there we go. There's our keyboard nest as if it's one clip. It's consolidated. Double click on it. It reveals it in its own timeline. And there you go. Um, all right, now if we really want to make, that's really it on the on the basic animation and compositing. Uh, we'll, as we move along, we're going to show more advanced stuff later on, but uh, right now I'm going to add some music. I've got some music from Incompetech, two clips called uh, Roll On At Five and Accelerate. I can't remember which is which. That sounds boring. Let's grab. There we go. We've got Accelerate. That's exhilarating. Awesome music from Incompetech. Uh, if you go to incompetech.com, you can grab royalty-free music. You have to just credit him. Uh, I'm going to drag this music down inside here. Uh, get that to the beginning. Move this over a little bit. Actually, what I'm going to do, instead of moving that over a little bit, I'm going to go to uh, my little new item icon here and add black video. I'm going to generate a black video. Hit OK. And I'll generate this black video. I'm going to drag that out of my folder there. Put it in the music folder because I'm inside of that. Uh, black video, this is just basically black video. That's all it is. I'm going to add uh, two seconds. Actually, let's go three seconds, three period for the two zeros of black. Hit O for out point. I'm already at home on my keyboard, so I'm going to hit comma. It'll drop it in and, and move it over. And now we'll play. It's got three seconds of black. I'm getting this ready for a YouTuber broadcast. There's the music playing too loud there. Going to turn that down. Still a little too loud. Okay, and at the end, I'm going to grab my black video. I'm going to copy that, go to the end, and add my black video at the end. I'm just going to fade out my music here. By the way, if you want to add a cross dissolve or a cross fade on your audio, Control Shift D will add, as long as you're landed on the edit there, Control Shift D will add the, the cross fade. And it fades out. Okay, so I've added the music there. One other little kind of cool trick here, I'm going to add a new item, Adjustment Layer. I'm going to hit OK, and it's added this little Adjustment Layer. If you drag this and drop it on top here of these clips, uh, what that's going to do is it's going to add this layer on top uh, that is an invisible layer. There's really nothing that this has done yet, but if you add a filter to this Adjustment Layer, it's going to affect everything below it. So I don't have to add a filter to every single clip. If I want to do some funky filter to this, uh, now all I have to do is go down to my effects and we're going to go to Lumetri looks uh, clear my search there Lumetri looks and we're going to grab a cinematic uh, bleach bypass let's try bleach bypass number two drop it to the adjustment layer it'll affect everything below it and give that bleach bypass look to everything below it uh, to my whole timeline below it um, one other thing I might want to do is add a quick little vignette so I'm going to add another adjustment layer actually what I could do here is, is a solid uh, so we're going to go new. We're going to add a little vignette. Um, going to do a new uh, color mat. Actually, I could do it with my black video, so never mind. I'm going to grab my black video. You could do a color mat or a black video. I'm going to add a black video to the top, which appears to black everything out because that's on top. That's okay, but now I'm going to add a uh, crop to this. Or, or actually, we're going to go circle. We're going to find a circle effect and drag and drop that to this. And it adds this little dot circle in the middle. I can change my color to black. Watch this. Uh, it's black. We're going to invert the circle. And we are going to actually expand the motion here of the file. Not the circle, but we're going to actually... Uh, actually, let's make this uh, circle 
Oops, that's moving the position. So we're going to make this circle bigger, as big as it gets, until it's almost reaching the end there. Now we're going to go to position. We're going to go to scale and make this so it's not uniform scale. And I'm going to change all this down, and we're going to change uh, the track, not the track height, the track width, like so. I'm going to go back down to the crop or down to the circle. And we're going to go to feather, and we're going to feather the edges of this to add a little bit of a vignette to the side. And now, if you want to, you can turn down the opacity here. It's a very obvious vignette, so I'm just going to make it very subtle by turning down the opacity of the clip a little less. There we go. And as we play through it, it's going to be a little bit stroby because you notice it's red. It needs to be rendered. I'm going to render it, and we'll come back and look at the final clip here. And by the way, uh, to render something, you just hit return or enter. Uh, enter on the PC, return on the Mac, the big fat enter key, and it will render all the red spots. And now I'm going to tilt over my video here, play it back. And we have our nice little hacker intro. Very cheesy, I know, but uh, I'll play this at the end and let you watch it. If you have any questions on animation or compositing, these are just kind of the basics. I mean, there's a whole bunch of other things you can do, like um, as in um, making it slow down or speed up at the beginning and the end of, uh, of your effect uh, add by adding Bezier curves and curves to the positions and things like that. Uh, it gets a little bit more advanced, but these are kind of the basics. If you want to do some basic split screening, that's kind of the way to do it. Now, enjoy our little hacker video.